If you're bringing the same level of value you were 10 years ago, that isn't really working in your favor. And most companies that are driven by result, it's not seniority or tenure that are likely gonna drive that. It has to do with the bottom line. This is a question I get asked a lot. I bring a lot of value and I don't feel like it's seen or respected. What do I do about it? And so as a coach, my goal is to approach this question as objectively as I can and to be as accurate as I can for the benefit of the person asking the question. And so one of the first things I'm gonna do is, how do you know you are bringing real value? How do you know how valuable you are? How are you quantifying that? So it's not uncommon for the human to have a disproportionate sense of their personal value that is not connected to the real world. And so if you're really trying to assess this, I'm gonna give you a couple of points here, but if you're really trying to assess this, the first thing I would do is can you quantify your value in a way and in comparison to potentially your peers or your replacement value? So for business owners and employees, I say this all the time, if you're an employee for a company, how easy are you to replace? The easier you are to replace, the less valuable you are. Now, maybe that sounds really harsh, and maybe in an idealistic world, it's like, we don't wanna hear that, but it's very true. Generally, the highest paid people in the world solve the biggest problems and are the hardest to replace. The easier you are to replace, the less value you bring. And so that's the first thing I'd be asking. How do you know you're valuable? So I don't want to start with the assumption that you are valuable. We want to get clear about our value. By the way, it is much easier to go to your boss or your superior if you can quantify, quantify the value you're bringing to the company uh, and show them exactly what you're doing. Now, I, was, I had a dear friend with me yesterday uh, and we were talking on, a, uh, on our podcast about this and he was sharing that he was in a company where one of his clients didn't see his value and his price was a little bit higher than the competitor. And the client said, we want it at this price or we're walking. And he said, feel free to walk. And they did. And less than six months later, they called him back and said, we made a huge mistake. We didn't understand the value you were bringing until you were absent. And so sometimes that's the case. Sometimes you'll have people that really don't understand how valuable you are until you're no longer there. And unfortunately, that's how they learn. And that can very much be a loss to them. Sometimes you may be able to reconcile the relationship. Very often, you're just moving on. So if we assume now we're clear about our value and we recognize that we are not easy to replace, the good news for you is if that is true, it'll be easy for you to go find somewhere, someone else or somewhere else that will value you more and pay you more. So if you truly have a high uh, value and are hard to replace, replacement value would be tough, then it's easy to go find another place that will pay you what you think you're worth, assuming what you're looking for in representation of value is pay. But that's the first thing. Am I easily replaceable? Now we're in an interesting time in our culture where, and I think rightfully so, more and more people are upset with how much things cost and how little they're getting paid. And I would agree that the pay discrepancy is really painful for a lot of people right now, and I can understand why they wanna get paid more money. But the marketplace isn't going to pay you more unless you bring more value. So we have a whole formula for this that I walk people through around how do you begin to upskill and create more and more value by your skill sets. You're generally going to get paid proportionate to your skill sets and the value they bring. And so we're in a we're in a time period where companies are being asked to pay people more money and they're doing it in varying degrees. But what they're also rapidly doing is using machinery and AI to replace jobs with machines that don't complain, that don't need health insurance, that are reliable, that they don't have to worry about calling out sick or making excuses, and they find that that's a cheaper path than paying, more, paying people more money. Well, that's a problem. If the value you're bringing can be replaced by a machine or AI, I would like to humbly suggest it's time to look at how you can pivot maybe over the period of the next five to 10 years into something where you're not likely going to be replaced or you're not easy to be replaced. Okay. Hammered on that point a few different times, but key one here, you're judging it by your replacement value and can you quantify your value to the business? Now, assuming you are a high value employee that you feel is not being respected or valued by your boss, first thing I would do is sit down with them and try to quantify the value so that they can see it in numbers, not opinions. Now, I admittedly recognize not all things are easily quantifiable, and so this isn't always an easy endeavor. And I'm hearing more and more of the time, especially with remote work, more and more companies are trying to figure out how to quantify work because 
if honestly, if they don't know what people are doing, all they can do to show value is the result they're bringing. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, the biggest wall in my office. And when you walk into our space here in Orange County, it says, be so good, you can't be ignored. And that has been an anchor tenant to how I show up and the decisions I make constantly. It's, it's very hard to argue with somebody who is getting a credible, incredible result. So my answer most of the time is just be so good, you can't be ignored. So I'd go to your boss, be able to quantify the value you're bringing relative to your peers and how easy you would be to replace. And then ask for a raise or whatever it is you're asking for. I assume it's more money, but it could be something else. It could be freedom. It could be more autonomy. It could be more recognition. It could be a promotion related to prestige more than pay. But whatever you're asking for, go in guns loaded with real data, not opinions. And here's things that most people aren't gonna care about. I've been here for five years. I've been here for 10 years. If you're bringing the same level of value you were 10 years ago, that isn't really working in your favor. And most companies that are driven by result, it's not seniority or tenure that are likely gonna drive that. It has to do with the bottom line. Now, I recognize fully as I'm saying this, you may work for a company that has a lot of nepotism or you have family dynamics or drama that's involved. You take that into account and that may mean you exit stage left. But that isn't most companies and it's a cop-out excuse to go there first. First start with taking an assessment of your true value and then quantifying it and bringing it to your boss and showing them what you bring to the table. If they are not willing to budge, then like I said, if it's true and your assessment isn't accurate, you'll likely be able to find another job that will pay you more simply because you're hard to replace. And if your true value is obvious and apparent, uh, it won't be hard to go into the marketplace and find someone else who will hire you. I will say though, uh, this can turn into a lot of regret. We had the great resignation over the last couple of years during COVID and I think something like 80% of the people that jo jumped jobs looking for higher pay regretted it. It isn't always greener on the other side. And so you want to be aware of that and make sure you're making a calculated decision. But if you're truly being undervalued for a long period of time and truly not being seen, one of the best ways you can show that you're valuable is by removing yourself from the equation so they can feel the weight of you not being there. In some cases, they may call you back and go, hey, we made a mistake. We're willing to pay you more. That's a game you want to be pretty careful with how you're pulling. But if you can quantify the value you're bringing to your company, if you can quantify the results you're bringing and it relatively you're underpaid to that, show them and if they're reasonable, they'll hear you. If not, I'd start looking for another job. If you enjoyed this video on wealth and would like to get more content like it, check it out. Here's my playlist.